Hey guys, Adam from Crypto Endure. Well, I've been waiting to do this video for a while, and it's in reference to axes or hatchets, actually specifically hand axes. So, of course, you know the difference going to be is, of course, the length. This is a Wetterling. I got this here recently. I uh, haven't had a chance to really go out there and use it out in the field. And I used to be a little hand axe guy or hatchet guy. This is an old Coleman I've had for years. I can't even remember when I got this, and uh, you know it did me well for a while. Uh, but then I kind of got got into the bigger knives. Uh, last but not least, we have something from our friends at Tops. This is the Ox 5, and although it looks very odd, it's actually a great little hatchet. Uh, I, there's an Ox 6 as well that I've actually given to my buddy, um, and uh, he really likes it. It's actually his, his uh, little preferred hatchet for firewood and everything that he keeps out in front of his house. Uh, uses pretty much daily. So just go over a couple things. To go over a couple of things with hatchets, you know, one thing is is uh, I believe that they're a little bit more skill set involved to mastering how to use an axe or a hatchet than a, than a knife. So you guys got to be uh, careful of that. And remember, the shorter a hatchet is, actually the more dangerous it's going to be. Because, of course, I'm not going to have much room when I'm messing with it and be closer to my body, therefore more prone to uh, possibility of injury. And unlike a knife, where a knife you can get a good cutter slash, good laceration, uh, this is a very um, uh, you know heavy, not blunt object, it's sharpened, but it's very... It's very dense, uh, and, and injuries are going to be very nasty. You need some ripping and tearing. It's not going to be a smooth cut. It's it's almost blunt. So you know, if somebody takes one of these in the foot or knee, it's going to it's going to cause a, a big problem. Uh, you know, in, in the calf or leg or even the hand, you're going to sever you know some things. So you really need to be careful. A lot of safety involved. And actually, I brought up my Wiley X's here. I'm going to do do some drills. So we're going to test these out now. You know, in reference to to cost and range, I mean this thing. I probably got it for 20 bucks when I bought it. This is just a Coleman's Act. It's, it's you know, uh, stainless steel. Uh, it's got you know rubber grip, little little ergonomic on there. This Wetterling is of course very you know very very nice uh, Swedish made steel hickory handle. This is going to be the nicest of them. I can tell you before I even do the testing. But this is going to take a little bit more maintenance to make sure the uh, you know the axe head stays nice. You have to put some uh, oil on that and also you're going to have to put some oil on the handle so the handle doesn't shrink, you know, get loose or start to rot or anything like that. So you're going to have to protect this where this thing is probably going to last forever. Um, in reference to this, uh, the tops one, you know, this is 1095 high carbon steel with a micarta handle. Uh, so this is going to last for a while with minimum uh, usage as well. They did throw a lanyard in here which is actually pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and get started on our test. We'll take the sheaths off and let, just like a knife, a sheath is very very important for your axe or hatchet because if you don't have a sheath it's really not safe to be putting in your bag uh, you know or carrying on your, you know some of these have belt loops and everything as well. For example this has got a, a belt loop so you can throw this on your belt and it's small enough that I think that's really uh, feasible. Now this sheath from the Coleman has seen some use and we're going to get talking about that in a little bit. Now the one thing that you want to keep in consideration with a hatchet or, or a small hand axe is you know, you're not going to be able to go out there and, and take down large pieces of wood. You know, this is mainly going to be used around the camp, uh, especially for bushcrafting, you know, for splitting big piece, uh, splitting firewood, you know, chopping down small pieces of wood. Anytime you're going to get out there for some really big deadfall, uh, you're going to need a large axe uh, because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit more uh, energy efficient to go out there and, and chop something. You're not going to get as tired using two hands. Uh, but a small-handed axe, you can you know, get a lot of work done. Um, but of course, a saw, you know, is always going to be better, especially a chainsaw. But this is something out there. So let's go over some, you know, some uh, basic use. Now, one thing, you know, and this is not going to be a video on how to use a hand axe. There's tons of that stuff out on YouTube. But anytime you're, you're going to be chopping or splitting, you want to be in a nice kneel position. You don't want to be standing up because if you're standing up and if you miss and you keep on swinging through, you're going to have more of a, uh, a chance of hurting yourself. So you want to have a nice block like this, and uh, so that way if you miss what you're working on, it's going to hit the block and it's not going to fall down and hit your leg. Now, um, like I said before, you just really want to be careful with the, uh, with the uh, hatchets uh, because it's really prone to, to injury. Everything's nice and wet right now, so this would be a good day. Uh, and we'll just put that. We'll put that out there. So one thing that's very important: you don't want to be fatigued when you're using these things. These things can fatigue you very fast, a little bit faster, or just as fast as maybe batani. But if you're out there chopping wood all day long, especially with an axe, uh, a lot of fatigue can happen. Also, because of their construction, 
they can break in use a lot easier than your, your normal fixed blade knife, especially with a wooden handle like this. You know, this is just going to have a certain shelf life before it's destroyed. Now, the axe head itself will probably last, you know, me all my life, and I'll probably have to order a couple more of these hickory handles. Or if you're out in the field and you're uh, fancy yourself a uh, a carver, you know, and you could probably you know construct one pretty easily. All right. So Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split some of these uh, pieces of wood. And you guys can see I've changed them in a kneeling position. So if I happen to miss, you know, this leg is down, I don't want to be this way where my toes are. Go ahead and move that back a little bit more so we have more space between us. And we're going to start with the wetterlings. Good to go. Now you can see I did mess up right there. I came down too straight. You got to kick out that blade a little bit to get more of a split. Well, something I forgot to do is uh, throw some safety goggles on. You know, that'll be a big help if, uh, unfortunately, I have an accident. One thing too, guys, always pay attention to what you're doing with this. Make every move deliberate. All right. Whew, some bugs were getting into that tree. Look at that, guys. Awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little splitting a little bit lower. So we're pretty good there. Got some uh, good small fuel wood. We can even get down a little, a little thinner if we want to. All right. So the wetlands did pretty well. Nice, just a nice comfortable grip here. And one thing too is you can really choke up on here if you need to. And over though, though it's not a knife. You guys can see how sharp it is. So you could probably even do a feather stick with this one, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's see what we got next. Let's move to our trusty old Coleman. Now this, a little bit harder to use this one in a uh, technique because it's so low. So, I don't know, maybe we'll start up here. Hmm. Don't like that. Okay, let's do something else. So everything's a little waterlogged. Let's see how we do. Wow. So, pretty good. That was 
20 good wax instead of 30. Let's try out this tops. Twenty nine with the tops. Oh, Jesus, this thing is dull. Well, that's 32, actually. So, let's see how much it takes. Forty-three. Whew. Well, oh, yeah, this is a dull boy, though, buddy. God, he has mauled up. Oh, like I said before, fatigue. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go over these a little bit. Uh, this one I'll be giving away. I got this one for free. So, of course, we'll be giving this away. Interested, too, I haven't forgot about the gear pods. We'll be giving that one away, too. I actually have an update on the gear pods. That one kind of got uh, put on hold after the birth of my third daughter. And I was in my garage, so I was working on it, and then I kind of forgot to get back to it. But we'll be getting back to that now. Okay, so let's go from, uh, I guess, worst to best. We'll start with the Coleman. I mean, you guys saw I was basically chewing through the wood. I wasn't really cutting through it. Now, this thing is dull. Uh, you know, I think I've done more damage today than I have any other time because it wasn't looking this bad when I got it out here. So this is not going to be the quality, something like the, um, the Wetterlings. I mean, you see... Well, you can see it's just bouncing off as it is. So, not bad though. Um, you know, for, for the price, you can't really go wrong. I mean, I think, I, like I said before, I paid like 20 bucks. Great for maybe a, a youngster who's trying to learn his skills with the hand axe. Make sure we're always uh, supervising our children though. So, uh, in reference to the, uh, the splitting, didn't have a, well, the splitting wasn't that bad at all. Uh, as for the chopping, you guys could saw it was really chewing through there. Had a lot harder time getting in there. Uh, the tops is pretty cool. I mean, the, the design of it is really odd. The one thing I don't like about it is you're not be able to choke up on here and use this as a knife at all. Um, you know, I guess you can go all the way back here, but then you're losing a lot of your leverage. But you know, it, it, did, it did pretty well. I mean, it's, it's, it's unique. You know, it could really uh, penetrate in there pretty, pretty well, as you guys can see. So it has no problem with that. Lander's a little small, I gotta adjust that, but we'll be giving that one away. Uh, the sheath isn't that bad either. I actually kind of like the idea. The sheath is very simple. You know, you have this one strap and then this belt loop, so if you guys want to carry this on your belt. And it's very small, compact. On the uh, review, I'll, be ha I'll have all the stats for the length and the weight and everything. Uh, but, you know, it did really well. Now, the Wetterlings, like I said before, I think is just awesome. Uh, I'm really glad I got it. I got it from uh, Sean Norris over there in Edgeworks. Uh, so this is something very, very small that you want to bring out with you if you're going really light. You know, they have some other lengths. Uh, this, this handle right here is only 12 and a half inches. Um, you know, you might want something a little bit bigger. Uh, but for you know just camp chores mainly splitting firewood this, some, this is something really good if you want to mix this with like a bushcrafting knife if you're trying to go really really light out there this might do well as, as well in reference to that i mean this thing is just awesome and you know the quality and the craftsmanship and the design of this is just just amazing i mean it's a con full convex uh convex edge it's just awesome and it's just it, each one is a work of art by itself so 
I'm really, really happy with this. Uh, one thing about this though is that you're definitely going to have to treat this. You know, get some oil in here. I can tell you already, I got to oil the handle, and also I got to oil the uh, axe head itself. So, and you're eventually going to have a little bit of uh, wear and tear on your handle, so you have to go in there and get a new one. Um, in reference to the sheath, it's just very simple. <sighs> got some dust on it right now. Simple leather sheath design. It does not have the belt loop like the other one does, but I'm, I'm sure you can fashion this through a loop. Uh, the one thing though, since this is a snap, if you have any weight on this and it pops a snap open, then your knife, your axe might fall out. So I wouldn't suggest that, um, you know, but you can always, most uh, axe handles like this size can fit through some molly webbing pretty well. But you know, it's got a good sheath. It'll fit in a backpack, so there's nothing, no issue with that as well. So, hey guys, that's pretty much my axe test. Uh, so just a couple quick pointers for you guys who are, who are axe guys. You now make sure you guys are really paying attention. Uh, if you're learning your axe skill, fatigue is your enemy with the axe. So watch out for fatigue and you guys be safe out there. So, well, hey guys, this is Adam from Equipped to Endure. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can email me at adam at equippedendure.com. You guys take care, be safe out there, and remember if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks.